Throughout Earth's history, there's been one constant rule. The ocean is always scarier than land. Whether it's today with great white sharks and saltwater crocs, or back in the age of dinosaurs with giant marine reptiles, the water has always been the more dangerous place to be. But there was one brief moment in history where that rule was completely flipped. A time when you'd actually be safer diving into the ocean than staying on land. A time when the terrestrial world was so nightmarish that even the water, despite being an ocean twice the size of the Pacific, was the better option. This was the late Permian, about 260 million years ago. And the land was ruled by creatures that would make a T-Rex look friendly by comparison. Welcome to Extinct Giants. Let's set the scene. We're traveling back 260 million years to the Lopingian epoch of the Permian period. This is long before dinosaurs. We're talking about the ancestors of mammals here. The world looked nothing like it does today. All the continents were smashed together into one massive supercontinent called Pangaea. Africa, North America, Europe, all connected into one giant landmass. And because everything was connected, there was only one ocean. Well, technically a few, but they were all dwarfed by Panthalassa, a super ocean that covered over 60% of Earth's surface. Just try to imagine an ocean that big. The days were shorter too, because the moon was closer to Earth. Each day lasted only about 22 hours instead of 24. The climate, brutal. Average temperatures hit 35 degrees C, twice as hot as today. Massive deserts dominated the interior of Pangaea, and droughts were common. Despite Panthalassa being absolutely massive, it was relatively empty. The oceans had just been hit by the Capitanian mass extinction event a few million years earlier, and marine life was still recovering. Sharks were around, but they were small. Nothing bigger than 2 meters or 6.5 feet. No apex predators, no giant marine reptiles yet. The water was boring, but on land, on land was where things got absolutely terrifying. The rulers of the late Permian were a group of animals called Gorgonopsids. And when paleontologists first discovered their fossils in 1876, they were so horrified by what they found that they named them after the Gorgons from Greek mythology. Monsters so terrifying they could turn you to stone. Now Gorgonopsids weren't mammals. They weren't reptiles either. They were Therapsids, a group more closely related to mammals than reptiles, but still not quite mammal. Think of them as proto-mammals, with all the worst features of both groups. And they had saber teeth. Not small ones either. We're talking about elongated canines that could reach 15 centimeters or 6 inches long. Curved. Serrated. Designed specifically for slicing through flesh and causing massive blood loss. The largest of these apex predators was Inostrancevia. Adults could reach 3.5 meters or 11 feet in length and weigh over 450 kilograms, about 1,000 pounds. That's roughly the size of a large bear, though built more like a tiger. But here's what made Inostrancevia truly nightmarish. It was fast. Those long, sturdy limbs allowed it to chase down prey at surprising speeds. And once it caught you, those saber teeth would go to work, either going for the throat like modern big cats, or using a bite and retreat strategy, letting blood loss and shock do the rest of the work. Neither option sounds particularly fun, and Inostrancevia wasn't alone. There were dozens of other Gorgonopsid species prowling Pangaea, smaller ones, medium-sized ones, and some that came close to matching Inostrancevia in size. In South Africa, there was an entire subfamily of giant Gorgonopsids called the Rubigenae. These things were stocky, heavily built, with massive skulls that took up over 15% of their total body length. Their teeth were even more deeply serrated than Inostrancevias, making them perfect for cutting through thick hide. The weird part? Despite having massive skulls and looking like they could crush bones, their bite force was only about 715 newtons, barely stronger than a wolf. But their teeth were so well designed that they didn't need a strong bite. They just sliced through everything like a hot knife through butter. So across most of Pangaea, if you were a herbivore, you had a Gorgonopsid hunting you. There was basically no escape. The late Permian was, without question, the planet of the Gorgonopsids. But wait, it gets worse. Because Gorgonopsids weren't the only predators around. There was another group called Therocephalians. These were also Therapsids, also saber-toothed in many cases, but more diverse. Some were the size of dogs, others the size of jaguars. They had broader skulls, straighter teeth, 
and more compact builds than Gorgonopsids. And here's the kicker. Some of them might have been venomous. There's evidence that certain species, like Eucumbersia, had venom glands and ducts in their skulls. If that's true, they'd be the first venomous tetrapods ever to evolve. Imagine getting bitten by a saber-toothed, dog-sized predator that also injects venom. Fantastic. The most successful Therocephalian was Moscarhinus, a jaguar-sized predator with a lion-sized head packed with sharp conical teeth. It hunted by pinning prey down with powerful forelimbs, then using its jaws to finish the job. And then there was Megawatsia, a three-meter or nine-foot-long monster from Russia. Based on fossilized feces, we know it fed on large herbivores. And like its smaller relatives, it might have been venomous too, though that's still debated. As if Gorgonopsids and Therocephalians weren't enough, the late Permian had even more nightmare fuel. There were the Protorosaurs, slender reptiles with needle-like teeth that looked like land crocodiles. Some were terrestrial, some were semi-aquatic, but all were opportunistic hunters. Then you had the Chronosuchians, heavily armored croc-like animals that could grow as large as American alligators in some regions. And in the freshwater, giant amphibians, huge salamander-like creatures that ambushed anything that got too close to the water's edge. The largest was Rhinesuchus, a 4-meter or 13-foot beast from South Africa that looked like a crocodile, but was actually an amphibian. Even the herbivores couldn't give you peace. Scutosaurus was an armored tank weighing over 1.2 tons, covered in bony plates and spikes. If you startled one, you'd probably get trampled. The skies? At least those were safe. Unlike the Mesozoic with its giant pterosaurs, the Permian had nothing dangerous flying around just some large insects and small gliding reptiles no bigger than bats. So, your only real option was the water. Now, you might be thinking, surely these apex predators survived for millions of years, right? Wrong. Around 252 million years ago, the late Permian came to a catastrophic end. This was the Permian-Triassic extinction event, also known as the Great Dying, and it's the worst extinction event in Earth's history. It was caused by the eruption of the Siberian Traps, a volcanic event so massive it covered an area the size of Western Europe in lava over a kilometer thick. The eruption spewed out so much carbon dioxide and sulfur that global temperatures skyrocketed even higher than they already were. In some places, average yearly temperatures reached the same as Death Valley's hottest month. Oxygen levels plummeted, causing widespread hypoxia. The ozone layer was damaged, leading to a 5,000% increase in ultraviolet radiation in some areas. By the end of it, 57% of all biological families and 83% of all genera had gone extinct. For comparison, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs only wiped out about 17% of families. The Gorgonopsids? Gone. The Therocephalians? Mostly gone. The giant amphibians? Gone. And ironically, marine life, which was already struggling, got hit even harder due to ocean acidification and rising water temperatures. But hey, at least the ocean was warm. Sea temperatures during the extinction reached jacuzzi levels. So if you were going to die, you might as well die comfortable. The late Permian was a unique moment in Earth's history, a time when the oceans, despite being absolutely massive and largely empty, were genuinely the safer place to be. Because on land, you had saber-toothed proto-mammals hunting everything in sight potentially venomous predators lurking in the undergrowth, and giant amphibians waiting by every water source. It was a world where even the herbivores were armored tanks, and the climate itself was trying to kill you. The oceans might have been boring, but boring is better than being hunted by a Nostrancevia. So the next time you're afraid of going in, the water. Just remember, there was once a time when staying on land was far, far worse. Thanks for watching Extinct Giants.